<laughs> I dedicate this one to y'all working from home. Y'all know who y'all are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what they call it? Telework. <laughs> yeah. I'm recording. We're doing. And get my name, my name, Brandon. Uh, hello, Pod. It's Ian and Nate. Let's start. Yeah, Corona Cast. <laughs> uh, so, Nate, how how you feel like the Trump administration is handling this coronavirus epidemic? Hey, man, let me tell you. I don't give a fuck at all. This is important, man. I was talking to my boss about the economy. Oh, he, you know, he 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 worked through uh, 2008 through you know the financial crash and the recession, and we were talking about like the difference there is like the bad uh, bad business practices and just poor economic you know policy that allowed people to take out loans that they couldn't afford and you know houses they couldn't afford things like that, and it led to this bubble you know building and building until it burst and everything and everybody went down with it. Whereas this is different because it's like. It's not that bad practices are in order. It's that the epidemic is literally halting the economy. Like people aren't working, and so therefore rent isn't getting paid, and bills aren't getting paid, and therefore they don't have money to to spend on frivolous things like food. Well, not food ain't frivolous, but you know toys and games and shit, other stuff that stimulates the economy, and you know bars and service industries like you know restaurants and movie theaters are closed so they don't get their revenue and it's just about like how long can this sustain you know oh man a lot to unpack i think i'm gonna start with that since overreaction to everything all righty um i get why it's an overreaction because you want to make sure that the older people affected and even some younger people now are starting to get it and not being able to bounce back but i bet a lot of those people did a lot of drugs and messed up their immune system so now they can't really fight it uh, so, this, this seems like a lot of victim blaming here so <laughs> well you can say that it's more realism and a realistic outlook on things the fact of the matter is there's 13,000 plus cases in america there's 386 million plus people in america it's nowhere near the epidemic people say it is here. We, we also have to take into account the people who aren't showing uh, symptoms but are infected, and also the people who are uh, infected but aren't getting tested or going to the hospital. You know. Yeah, but but I'll, I have a cold probably every year at some point, and I never go to the doctor for it, and I walk around with symptoms. It's fine though; I get over it. Yeah, but the uh, from what I've seen, what I've heard from about coronavirus stuff is that. The, they don't like I said they don't have a vaccine for it so they're not able to f- treat it sufficiently and also that the strand that the the coronavirus is actually constantly changing and adapting and so by the time they do enough research on one strand another one has already been created they they talk about uh how you know China has now sent people back to work and they're kind of letting people out the hospitals and it's kind of getting back to business as usual at least for the time being but they're setting up for uh, another wave of the coronavirus, like a new strand that they haven't been prepped for because they're not aware of it. So, you know, it's go- it's going to come back there at some point, some point soon. Also, you have to think about, um, my, I mean, we were talking about my boss today. He's saying, like, he talked to someone who was like, this thing could go on for 18 months where we're in this quarantine and it only gets worse. More and more people get affect- infected, less and less people get insured. There's a capacity issue. We can't send... Uh, they can't go to the hospital because they can't take them because there's you know like a capacity issue, and then you have places like Italy where they're like literally have coffins of dead bodies being transported by the military there to be cremated. So you know you don't know you never know how bad it's going to get. Uh, but what they're saying is now is like half soon half the country will have it like either knowingly or or no or non knowingly have some strain of the virus. <laughs> And most be fine. Yeah, probably there's a good chance, but you know, if it's not gonna kill everybody, then it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm, I'm being honest with you. But if you don't have a, if you don't have the vaccine for it, who knows how that can adapt and then change into something else later on? That's why they're doing tests now to make sure they can combat it. And many people have the flu but don't get the flu shot, and they become fine later on. You let stuff wear out. 
your body will learn to adjust to what it is and fight it off if you have an immune system. But which, the, but the flu is an old but the flu is an old uh, old type of bacteria in your system. Like for instance, there's ways to combat it without actually getting a flu shot. But the the coronavirus ways are similar, sure, but they're not concrete and they don't have enough information on it in humans to like make a super sound judgment the way they would a typical it's just too many people walking around with it who like I'm positive, but you feel fine. Like nothing's happened to you. And it is too many of them to be like, oh, well, it's a, it's a, it's, it's latent symptoms. Like, it's latent symptoms. You like, you may not get our systems for like a, a week and a half or so. I'm talking about the people who are diagnosed with it. Yeah, you might have it, but you might not get symptoms until like a week and a half or so. Or they might never get it. Like Tom Hanks hasn't gotten really, and Idris Elba hasn't. How do, you, how do you know? Because they haven't said anything. What do you mean? Why would they say they've been feeling sick? Why would they need to say that? They're not. Public officials. Why would you put out that uh, you have it in the free You're not they were, a public. They were saying they they have it and they're uh, they're being quarantined, and taking the reasonable steps so that they don't infect others. That's what they said. They haven't really spoken since. Well, Tom Hanks has spoken since. What did he say after the fact? He said that he's okay. Yeah, I mean, being okay doesn't mean you're not sick. That's exactly what it means. Okay. In terms of Idris, he said he had just come in contact with somebody who had the virus, so he had gotten checked and said he tested positive. It doesn't Look, mean he man. would show symptoms that fast. It's not a big deal, bro. I'm sorry. I, I don't feel the way everybody else does. I'm not scared at all. And if it is time to go, it's time to go. Uh, the reason people are so scared is... Ari V. Hudgens. And the reason people are so scared because they don't know where they're going. Ari Gabriella. And in the Bible it says locusts, uh, what was it? Locusts, viruses, and fire. I don't think it said viruses. I think it said plagues. But plagues, and, and that's a it's swarm of locusts viruses. going over Africa right now. In uh, the, the Bible it said, said H1N1 would be the first bearer of the apocalypse. And then it would come Ebola. Sure. And now it is a <laughs> it is a coronavirus. Um, um, all this stuff is, do is documented. It was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And these are these the last days, so you better get it right. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> what you laughing for? I know. <laughs> it's the way you said it. That's funny. It's the last day, so you better get it right. <laughs> you, what you, said. you have more faith in this. Uh, you want this administration of Trump and all these people and these lawmakers to to give you more than you looking for God to give you. That's why everybody's so worried. I'm not worried about what they give me because I know what God will give me. I mean, I don't. I'm not worried about it because uh, I don't know. I feel like a certain look. This 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 kind of how I feel about it. Like right now, things are at a standstill. The people are kind of ineptly standing around, and you got you got dummies on Twitter being like, "The president got to do something. What if we can't eat?" And he's like, "You're fine." Uh, but you got internet access. You ain't gonna die. But uh, my thing is at the point when it gets real bad, like when people aren't going back to work, and now they're like. Uh, I'm out of money and I can't pay rent and they're going to turn off my phone and I can't afford food. When it gets to that point, that's when it gets real bad. And that's also, and I think before it gets to that point, probably they're going to do something like, I, th I mean, I think they probably should, depending on how, I think they're trying to wait and see how it's going to shake out. You know, it just, people just started quarantining. So let's say they go into April, late April, and they're like, oh no, we got to stretch this out to the end of the year. They're probably going to push something real fast and be like, all right, we're halting all rent payments, all tax payments, all fucking bills, all that's getting held up. Uh, and I think that's going to come eventually if it, you know, lingers. But other than that, I think people are going to last for two months because realistically, the people who are complaining about it are people who are going to be fine anyway. The people who aren't complaining about it are the people who are really going to be affected because they just don't, they don't, because niggas who really work jobs don't get on Twitter and complain about, don't tweet at the president that you're doing a bad job. The only people who do shit like that are people with... Are uh, liberals? Huh? Are uh, liberals? I mean, like, the kind of liberals who... who I don't know, man. I, I don't want to speak ill on people. Cause, because I, I do think the heart is in the right place, but sometimes I just be like, oh, man, like, we out here, like, riding for, like, free, like for universal health care and shit, and y'all... Let me let me let me just vent for one second. You got niggas out here like I don't like Bernie Sanders because his supporters are mean. Like, and I'm like, I like yeah, I get it. You know, we we be, they should be nicer. And then they're all like, 
yeah, but they're just mean, and I, I like Elizabeth Warren. I'm like, yeah, well, she's not in the race anymore, so it makes sense to support Sanders, and he also supports, no, I'm going to support Biden. I'm like, wait, wait, what? And they're like, well, you know, because he's nice. And I'm like, what do you mean he's nice? He don't support nothing you support. He's literally the antithesis of everything that you support. Why would you support the guy? And they're like, yeah, but he's not mean like the other ones. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, so you don't really care because you got good health care, and you're not worried about dying of cancer and you have family who sent you to college and you have all straight teeth and you know all this bullshit because you you can tell you can tell who they are when people who are like y'all should stop being so mean about not being able to afford your medical bills i get it i get you don't go to the hospital and now you have a a twisty back but you know deal with it you shouldn't be mean about it i'm doing okay i'm not mean i'm like yeah but don't you have like a really well-paying job and you live in a great city with great friends and they're like, yeah, but what does that have to do with it? I, I, uh, niggas on Twitter, bro. They the worst. Niggas who live on, who, niggas who believe Twitter's real life are the worst kinds of people. Sorry. Go, what were you saying? Oh, no, no, it's fine. You know what this whole, the, uh, speaking on the election thing real quick, and uh, I know it's documented in this podcast, I don't like politics. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't like, I don't dislike them. I'm just not um, versed you, enough. You, you, like you say, you said they aren't for you. And they aren't for us. They're not just not for me. They're not for us. But anyway, um, um, yeah, I, I was saying about this election. I think the one thing that has been interesting, I've been thinking about this lately, the one thing it really showed in a very strong way was that um, this country isn't really as progressive as it seems. Okay. Even the ones, were, even ones who were screaming that kind of talk, because like, Think about this real quick, like uh, eight years ago, four years ago, rather, they put in Trump when they got Hillary. And if you look back, <laughs> the stuff that people were mad about with her, including me, it was kind of, it was way overstated. It didn't matter. Like all the emails and stuff, it didn't really fucking matter. It didn't have nothing to do with her politics, really. She just cheated on the election. Most politicians probably do that. And, you know, it was like, all right, cool. She, she, also, she, had, she had the issue of also being like one of the most, apparently one of the most unlikable presidential candidates of all time. She, and that's because she pandered, and everybody could see right through it. Like all the high sauce. Also, also, I'm pretty sure she's kind of a bad person. She absolutely, she absolutely is a bad person. But like, most like, politicians, like, and most politicians, some, are, are some stuff she said. Like I, I used to be all like, no, nah, we can't hate on Hillary. You know, she does the best she can. She's a smart lady. She cares. I, I just want to finish my point. I don't finish my point. Oh yeah, go ahead. So like, the stuff we were mad about, including myself, because I was a tie. Like I ain't gonna fuck because she cheated Bernie. Like. Did she really? Like, it wasn't really that bad. Like, to not put her in the house over the other guy, and, and, and all the people were like, it's the lesser two evils. It kind of went. Like, Hillary is, might not be a good person, but she would have been a good politician and a good president, I think, in terms of what a good president is. I think, well, they all answer to somebody, and it ain't congressman. I'll just say that and leave it at that. But, uh... Yeah, it's the electorate. It ain't that either. But uh, I'll leave it at that. But, like, she would have been better than this, Oh, yeah, right? for sure. and, and, and and liberals just kind of like we're like nah and it's like you don't have your priorities in check but also and, and, and then you go for four years and elizabeth warren that don't get the uh she don't get the thing this time right no. and people i'm not voting for bernie i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go vote for biden who by all accounts is a part of that old vanguard that a lot of the liberals are trying to get rid of in terms of like old america like how it used to be and like, well, well, liberals more centrist. You're thinking progressives, but I get you. Sure, them too. Are they all together? Are all them, are all them soy boys over there together? But look, uh, oh dear, it, it's just like at the drop of a dime, when Elizabeth Warren can get it's like, okay, you still got Bernie. He's the next best thing, or he's even more better than her to to a lot of people. And they're like, now nah, we're just gonna go for Biden. And he's beating Bernie terribly in every uh, primary now. It's it's, a- it's 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 so bad that it's 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 really well, disheartening. Uh, I'm almost done. He's he's gonna be the the dem. Uh, he's he's gonna win. Yeah, he's and gonna it's, be and, and it's like so you didn't get Hillary in for like bogus things, and you you would rather have Trump win than her, who is clearly a throwback to an old way of thinking. And then like because Elizabeth Warren can get it, you want you don't want Bernie, who's maybe too progressive for a lot of people to even think. And I think that's a conversation that probably they have. A lot of people aren't as progressive as they think because they're willing to put Biden in there, who by all accounts, based on everything I've seen in this in this whole election cycle, is is a throwback too. People think he's closer to Trump than Bernie or Elizabeth Warren is, but you'd rather have him in there than Bernie too. Mm-hmm. This 
nowhere near as progressive as it thinks it is. And a lot of that talk is Twitter, which which we always say it does not equate to real life. A lot of people online probably don't even vote, but they do all the talking. The real voters don't really mind America being a throwback to the old day of thinking, because a lot of people grew up during that time. And, and here's a and here's a here's a, a newsflash for a lot of people: they don't think it's as bad as you do. They didn't think that time was as bad as you do. Even older black people, older black people voting for uh, for Biden, and he represents a certain way. That means that they like that certain way of life, and they don't really vibe with this new way of life of Bernie, who 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 keeps putting down the establishment. And to them, the establishment is like, you know, Democrat or old school Democrat, or you know how they used to think. And it's like, why are you putting that down? He's like, I'm putting that down because it's better. And they're like, Nah, it ain't better to me. Those Democrats have done a lot for black people. We voted for Biden because he represents the old way of thinking. They're like, the old way of thinking is Trump. And it's like, not really. But like, but they're kind of the same. <laughs> it's like, and they're just saying it in a different way. I, like, I, I, I wouldn't say that though. But no, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they're the same. I'm saying that they come from the same school. I, I I'm not saying like Trump and Biden are the same. I mean, I don't know them two niggas enough to say that they're the same, but I'm saying like it represents a certain way of thinking. It represents a certain time in America. Um Elizabeth Warren, I say even Hillary and and especially Bernie represents a new way that America thinks is going, but really America is as old traditionally as it's always been. America has not changed as much as people think it is. Mm-hmm. And Alexis Saka has told me that because Biden is gonna win, mm-hmm. he's probably who's the Trump. We're gonna give eight years of Trump, and then I don't know who's gonna do it after that. It might be Biden. Biden probably gonna be president at some point. Nah, and, this is his third time going. If he loses time, it's over. Well, I think if Bernie loses time, it's over. Oh, Bernie loses time, he out. He ain't he ain't doing it again. And then who do you go to? But, but it's, it's done though. It's like he, he, he there's no way he can win now. He's he's definitely. But not gonna be the it might be Warren in four years, maybe. But I think she oh, might be like oh, Warren, dude. Warren's going to be the one to carry the torch, probably. And I th- I, th- I think even saying something like carry the torch is just like uh, like old people don't want to hear that all that bullshit. Like oh we're going to change that. Like I don't want to change. I want to make shit my shit good. And what? Biden gonna do. Because he come from an old school line of Democrats, and he was with Obama. That's all they care about, and they don't care about all that pro- all that progressive. Like we need blah 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 and blah. blah. They're like, oh, Here, I don't. Need here's the thing. Blah. Here's the thing that worries me, right? Because like I'm gonna vote for Biden in the general election because anybody's better than Trump, right? My, I don't think that's true. Either. I mean, I think if it's either Biden or Trump or Hillary or Trump, it's one. It's definitely not Trump. That's my point. Um. And I'm pretty sure Biden, I think Biden has a really good chance of winning. People say he doesn't, but I'm pretty sure he's going to win. Um, well, hey, y'all said the same thing about Hillary. So. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I didn't think Hillary, I, I didn't think Hillary could lose. Like, I was like, who, who could lose to Trump? And then she did. And then you realize she's the worst politician ever. Um, be, no, no, no. Be, uh, it's partly that she, she ran a terrible campaign, but America is not as progressive as people on Twitter think it is. No, no, no. I don't, I'm not saying that is not the case. I'm saying nobody cared about Hillary Clinton. Like, we we forget. I always like people always say. She, okay, let's back up for one second. Let me talk about Biden real quick. Here's the thing with Biden, right? He is literally the baseline candidate, and the fact that he's winning. Okay, look when when the vote came here, I was like, all right, I went. I told my mom asked me, she was like, who you voting for? I'm like, I vote for Bernie. She's like, you vote for Bernie? You vote for Biden? I'm like, I'm not voting for fucking Biden. Exactly. And I was like, and she was like, he could be better for the black vote. I'm like, exactly. nah. I'm like, no. Nah. And then, so I went and voted for Bernie. Bernie lost by over 100,000 votes <laughs> here. Hey, hey, he get, hey, hey, he gets skull dragged in this shit. He get, I mean, really, it's real bad, especially this time. It's worse than it was yeah, last time. Four years ago, he was beating Hillary in a, in a, a number of these. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot closer then than it was now. Like, here is just kind of, he really is getting dragged to a large degree. But it, it, he's losing in places he should not be losing in. Um, but he, he, here's the thing with that. Uh. I think, like, Barack Obama ran on a progressive campaign. His name was Barack Hussein Obama. He was the first black man, black president. He wrote, he ran on hope and change. And what he revealed when he got in office, he was like, no, he's still taking money from the big guys just like everybody else. And he, and he played the game the same way that everybody else plays it. And all that, all that hope and change stuff. Like, pe- people voted for Barack because, one, he's, a, he's one of the best politicians America's ever had. He's an amazing politician. Can't speak to him. And two, he he ran on like we can change things, and he ran as a candidate as like the future of America, a black man as president. All that shows that America is ready to make those changes. Here's the thing with Hillary. 
Hillary's a bad politician. Nobody believes anything she says. And you, she can go out there and be like, we're going to make the first woman president. People look at her and like, you're fucking liar. Nobody likes you. You're rude and you're mean. And that's why you didn't win against the black guy. And that's why you're not going to win now. Uh, and nobody saw that coming. The black guy. And the thing now with Biden is we've had four years of Trump, which is the worst dude ever. And now everybody, all these, all these old people, black, white, whoever, whomever, who are Democrats, they're like, yeah, Bernie's talking all this revolution stuff, man. I just want to get back to what Obama was. And like some people were like, the reason why black folks like Obama is because he, he, the, he, he, without any hesitation, stood behind. Well, no, the reason people like Biden is because he, without any hesitation, stood behind Obama and and took he took his lead in all this shit. In my head, I'm thinking, all you had to say is because niggas like him because he would. That's all you have to say. That's fine. Like it's cool. My problem with it is people are so afraid and annoyed with Donald Trump. They're just willing to get like, let's just get back to when we had when things were easy and we weren't scared. And, and Bernie's talking about all this change stuff, and we don't want to. We we don't want. We've already had all this tumultuous Trump years. Let's and, and now we have to have another four years of tumultuous Bernie. And and I've been hearing on the news about how his supporters are all men who hate women and. Uh, I hear about how he can't pay for Medicare for all, and he's a liar, and all this shit. And he's a communist. He's not really a Democrat. All that bullshit. All this media bias towards him. At the end of the day, the system was set up in a way to be like Biden is the guy. Every fucking candidate who was running got out of the race to support Biden, which is crazy unprecedented. And then the media was like, Biden seems like the guy. He got the black vote. Black people like him, so he's gonna win. And then Bernie just kind of slid under. And and then and now Biden's getting those states talking about we should do free college for all. And I don't believe a fucking thing he says. It may look after that after we I voted here and Bernie lost like like got dog slid. I thought to myself I was like I'm up for Biden and then y'all on your own. I got a job. I got health insurance. Fuck all y'all. Y'all made y'all choice. You old people can die. And in 20 years we can make some change. But until then I'm gonna let y'all have y'all's way. And if Trump wins again, that ain't on me. That's on y'all. Y'all chose the losing horse. And if RB, RGB dies, whatever her name is, Ruth, and they get an all-Republican Supreme Court, and they fucking overturn Roe v. Wade, and they cut taxes on the rich, and they raise taxes on the middle class, and they cut Medicare and Social Security. I'm going to look at y'all, and I'm going to be like, you old niggas made your choice. You decide to vote for the nigga y'all recognize instead of the nigga who was telling y'all we can do better. And I, and it, really, I was just so checked. I was so angry. I remember... I remember a Super Tuesday, the first Super Tuesday happened, and I was like so depressed. Cause I was like, Bernie's gonna win. He's doing well. Biden just won North Carolina. It's fine. Some black people they liked him, but Bernie has the, the the weight of the people behind him, and he lost so badly. I got so depressed. I was like, I can't let this affect me like this. So I chilled. I stepped back, and then when he lost here the way he did, I was like, Look, the oldies and the black folks they made their choice, and you know either Biden's gonna win and he's gonna do nothing and or make it worse, or just equilibrium, the whole thing, and we're just going to be living in the same America, or it's going to be Trump, and it's going to get worse and worse, and worse and worse. And it's just going to all suck. And, uh, you know, like you said, Nate, it ain't, like, really, a- after this, I'm just like, it ain't for us, man, because Bernie, if Bernie, if Bernie ain't winning this time. It's already decided. He ain't got the delegates. There's no way he's catching Biden. Biden's going to win it. So look, so who's who's the guy? Like I, I thought to myself, I'm like, all right, if Bernie, like this movement is bigger than Bernie. Progressive, we're trying to get Medicare for all, we're trying to get healthcare, all this good stuff, all this you know mental health, all that stuff. So who's the guy past Bernie? And I'm like, nobody else is Bernie. Bernie has been authentic for 40 years. He's been right before everybody else was. He was for gay marriage in the 80s, back when fucking Joe Biden said marriage between a man and a woman. He was right in the Iraq war. He was right in his call on all these things. And people still, even after 40 years of being like, I've been right before everybody else. I care about the people. I want to, I want the government to do more for you. And people say, I don't know, man. And then they do that. Who's going to do it? Elizabeth Warren? She's proven that she's not trustworthy, that she'll, she says she cares about the things Bernie cares about, but is willing to compromise just so she can get elected. All these niggas are fake. And Bernie was the only... The, the reason why I think people are so upset about Bernie and me is me also is like, and, pe- and, and and people who don't like Bernie don't get it. They're like, you Bernie people are so mean and so angry. But the point is, it's like Bernie is like a once in a lifetime candidate. Nobody is that consistent and authentic in his speech. And so bad as a politician that he could, because he's so honest, 
that he's willing to lose political position simply because he feels in his heart that this is the right thing to do. No other politician does that. He literally got on stage multiple times when people asked him, do you think Fidel Castro, a dictator in Cuba, did good things for his country at some point? He said, I don't support Fidel Castro, but he did good things. And people were like, how can you say he did anything good? He's a bad man. And he, and he doubled down. Any smart politician would have been like, I apologize. I shouldn't have said it. Uh, anything done in Cuba is bad. No, he was like, what, we can't say good things about Cuba? He did one good thing. He might have done a lot of bad, but he did one good. And then niggas got on his ass for that, too. He's so authentically honest. He's even, even, even in the last debate, when they were like, Joe Biden, will your, will your vice president be a woman? Joe Biden was like, yes. And then they asked Bernie. They asked Bernie, Bernie, will your vice president be a woman? He said this. He said, the tendency is to pick a woman, but the point of the vice president is to pick someone who supports my progressive ideals. So in case something happened to me, we would still have progressive ideals being pushed in the White House. But the ten- yeah, I would, I would probably lean towards a woman. And people were like, Bernie didn't support a woman. He didn't say he would vote for a woman, but Biden said it. So Biden... You know, Biden did it. It's an easy gesture. He made the right call. He's doing the progressive thing. And, and, and he's probably lying, too. No, he's probably going to pick a woman. He's probably going to pick just, he's going to pick Kamala Harris because she's black and she's a woman. And, and they're going to do it for, to pander, like you say. They're going to do it because it's like, go talk to the to the black ladies in Mississippi and get them to vote for us. All that bullshit. And Ber- Bernie literally got up there and said, like, yeah, you know, I, I, I want to pick a woman, but if I can't find the woman right for the job, I'm not going to pick a woman. And they were like, fucking misogynist. That's how good he is. He could have just literally said, yeah, I'll pick a woman. Fine. Is that what y'all want to hear? But no, he literally, that's the thing I'm talking about. And now that he lost, he's never going to run again. He's like 100 years old. He's going to die in like two years. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of a bummer, man. Because it's like, who's the next guy to pull, who, who's going to be the next Bernie? I don't want to wait another 20 years. I think Medicare for all needs to happen now. I think people need medicine now. People need mandatory mental health checkups now. And people can't wait. I know a girl who rash who if she can't get a if she doesn't have a job at the time, she has really bad diabetes. She can't afford her insulin. She has to ration her insulin. That's fucking crazy. And she, I'm sorry, she should not have to do that and fear for her life and do it in a way that she could ne- possibly die from her, her from her chronic condition simply because she can't afford the high price of insulin. Like that's one mo- that's one instance. Of a thousand, I'm uh, I'm getting angry. Let me just stop. I talk, I told Willie this days ago. I was like, I'm not. I'm done with it, man. Look, the blacks and the olds and the dumb dims and the, like, the centrists. We said we got up and we was like, hey, we can do Medicare for all. We can get medicine. We can we can even expand Social Security. And they said, no, we want the Nick. We want that guy because he was next to Obama because we like Obama and he looked like a he he he. Would... <sighs> okay. Um, well, I don't know why you so been out of shape and you think all you gotta do is hey, look hey, back. Hey, hey, one, one more thing. Look, Jay, Jay, Jim Clyburn in South Carolina prior to that election, he said, I endorsed Joe Biden. He said, I endorsed Joe Biden because I know Joe Biden. And, be, and, and better yet, Joe Biden knows us. What the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? He's like, he was with Obama, man. That's all that means. He said, he said, yeah, you know, Joe Biden, you know, it's it's common that you be in Charlotte and you go into a diner, you see, Char- you see him in there with his wife and he's chatting up people. He's just a nice guy. I'm like, what does that mean? I, does that mean I need to vote for you? Does that mean, does that value an endorsement? Like, I guess that's what it has to be, man. You got to be nice to these folks. You got to you gotta go in there, smile, shake their hands, and then be like, hey, yeah. Uh, we we good friends. Bernie, Bernie went in there and was like, I don't like y'all because y'all against medicine for poor people. And they're like, damn, Bernie, it's just a difference of opinion. And Bernie's like, no, niggas are dying. It's not a difference. And they like, yeah, Bernie, this Bernie guy, man, he needs to calm down. Nobody likes that guy. And then now they're like, see what happens? You got to work across the aisle. You got to be nice to the people who also want to. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just. The, the kinds of people who are like, don't like Bernie but support progressive ideas or like I like the Warren because she believed what Bernie believed and she's a woman and she's nice, unlike Bernie. And now that she's out, I'm gonna vote for Biden. Those are the kind of niggas who be like who probably in the sixties would have been saying shit like, Well, I don't know, maybe maybe civil rights just ain't ready for this, you know. Maybe the whites down there just need time more time. Maybe y'all just gotta chill for a bit. Why y'all gotta stand in their stores? Why you gotta be rude? Can't you just stand, can't you just like 
be nice and tell him to let you ask him to let you in. Stupid ass. Uh, sorry. Yeah, what were you saying, man? <laughs> I, I think the world is. I think this country is nowhere near progressive as they think. And only. And I think Obama won because it was the right place, right time, and who he went against. He went against John McCain, who was not loved until right before he died. At that time, a lot of people didn't like John McCain. They didn't really come around until he got sick and old, and they were like, oh, he's a hero. And Obama then they, ran as a progressive. That's the thing that sucks. But wait, and also, Mitt Romney, he might have had a better chance until he did that, like, uh, what was that comment he had about the 34% or something like that? Uh, it's like forty seven percent one. Yeah, like, yeah, some kind. And it sunk his entire shit. He was done, and he was a Mormon, and people weren't ready for all that shit. And Obama was just at the right place, right time. He looked good. He talked good. He was young. He was black, and it worked. If he had a better opponent, it might have been harder for him. And also, he he ran on a, his his slogan was hope. He didn't run on a hopeful campaign. His, he sl his slogan was change, hope and change. It, yeah, his slogan was hope and change. His campaign really wasn't. He wasn't saying that much different stuff than anybody else was. He, it was I, mean, I mean, he was saying the broad, you know, Democratic <laughs> talking point, but he but he was also a guy named Barack Hussein Obama who looked like that and was like that, like that, that face and that, you know, identification made it so that it seemed like a brave new thing was happening. And it definitely was. Barack Obama, look, here's the thing about Barack Obama. A lot of that was planned. Well, politics. Well, Barack Obama is like a one in a million politician. There's, there's like five no, 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 people on no, no, no. a better Obama, political mind than Barack Obama. They are already. It was going to happen whether they wanted to or not. That stuff was going to happen. And this one's going to happen the way you wanted to or not. But, hey, the quickest way you get over this shit is you realize it's like it, it, it's like wrestling. It's preordained. It's an it's an ending uh, already set in place. It's a winner and a loser already set. And it ain't going to be, it might not be the one you want. That's how you get over stuff like this quickly. I, and you I don't, told Willie I'm probably going to be a Republican at some point. At least then I can get lower taxes. I ain't got to take more money on my check. Or you just not give a fuck about neither. Because well, cause it's the same shit on both sides. No, they, no but, I'm, but I'm saying if the, if the Republicans are cutting cutting taxes, then I'm cool on that. It, look, look, man, at the end of the day, what this is showing me is you, you can't care about other people. Because other people only care as much as they are are able to. And the moment they're like... Well, I guess I don't get this person, so I guess I'm just gonna deal with the night. You know, the kind of the kind of bullshit where people are like, "Why are y'all so angry?" It's like people are angry because people are fucking hurting, man. And you know, <laughs> you think fuck about people hurt? I, I don't know, man. I, I, I just think like, are these the same people who run up in your house and be like, "I ain't had no money, so I have to steal yours." I don't, I don't like yeah. those people at the top is not gonna feel sorry for no nigga. Who can't go to the doctor because they think that nigga's the thing about shoot. Bernie Nate? He did. That's what's. That's why he was such an anomaly. He actually cared. When, you know, I mean, Killer Mike talks about this all the time, and and it, it's a beautiful thing to talk about. He he talks about when Bernie Sanders was having a rally and the Black Lives Matter people. This is 2015, and they came up there and they started shouting with their signs at his rally. And people were booing them, and Bernie was like, "No, don't boo." And he and he gave them the stage to say their piece to talk about, you know, the deaths of Eric Garner, Mike Mike Brown, and other black men at the hands of the police. And he gave and he and he seated the stage so that they can get their message out because he understood that what they were saying is something he couldn't relate to or speak on or dismiss. So he allowed them to have that platform to do that. Most people would have looked at them and been like, "Get out of here!" And there's an exact moment where that happened to Hillary Clinton in a private small rally in a house. And she literally had security take the girl out and said, I'm sorry, let's get back to real issues and start talking back to her people. That to me was like, and, and Killer Mike talked about it. He was like, he talks, he talked about on a stage. He was like, Bernie, let them speak. You know how many politicians, you don't have to do that. It's your rally. Bernie, let them have the place to, to be that thing where they were, they were literally disruptors coming there protesting and he let them have their time and nobody else would have done that. Like that kind of thing to me is in itself a moment to be like, look, this is a guy who obviously supported gay marriage in the 80s, supported trans rights in the 80s and the 90s. And, and a lot of people don't like that shit. Exactly. Nobody, that's why Hillary said nobody likes Bernie, because people think Bernie is too about what he about. And, and everybody else is like, yeah, I don't care. Like, if, if it's popular, I ain't going to do it. If it is popular, I'll do it. And Bernie's like, yeah, if it... I don't care if it's popular. It's the right thing. No, 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 no. I don't think you understand what I'm saying because now the gay shit is popular and the transgender shit is popular. 
the unpopular thing to do would be like that shit is an abomination. Exactly. But Hillary was out here not advocating for gay rights until it became popular. That's the thing. Bernie. Yeah, and, and, and that's why she 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 should have stood on her square and be like, no, I don't agree with it. That's the real. <laughs> shit. If she said that, she'd be outsy. She uh, okay, out good, but I'm not gonna get in that office and like shirk my values just for a seat. Fuck that seat, cause you got to do some shit you don't want to do anyway. For it, we ain't gonna talk about that. But uh. But anyway, it's like, no, nah, like, you, you saying all the stuff he did in the 80s about gay, uh, you know, a lot of America don't agree with that shit. So, it was, so as soon as you talk about that gay shit, they're going to be like, oh, I'm out. I ain't going to deal with this shit. Because they don't agree about the transgender and that gay shit. And that's fine. You ain't got to agree with that shit. It's, and it's becoming like a place where, like, if you don't, then it's like, you a bad person. Like, no, nah, I just don't agree with that shit. And it's fine. It was the time and place where that. I, I, I probably they, think you're a bad person. I don't agree with that shit, but uh, it ain't on me. It's just like, hey, whatever do you? I don't care. I'm not gonna hold him no sign and be like, stop it. But at times I'm like, I, I don't want my son to be gay at all or transgender. So I mean, I just, it, it is what it is. Hey, and you don't either. You just ain't gonna say it though. <laughs> hey, I don't care either way, man. Whatever makes a man happy. But I'm um, just like, like uh, running on that. Like you gonna isolate a lot of middle America because they but don't. He, know. But, he, but he wasn't running on that. I'm just saying those are examples of things he's supported in the past. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, it's, the idea. Look, here's the thing. To me, it was like Bernie or Elizabeth Warren. Those are the only two I really wanted because they are both progressives talking about progressive things. You know what I mean? You know, uh, Warren's talking about universal health care. She's talking about universal daycare for children. She's talking about loan forgiveness. She's talking about all that stuff. Like, really great progressive ideas. Bro, everything comes with a price. And as soon as you tell people that you're trying to get them something for free, you're going to already see through that bullshit. But, it, no but, it, but the, the, look, here's the thing. That's what people say. And that's and that's that's mainstream media talking points, and that's Republican talking points. How do you pay for it? Where does the money come from? They always say that bullshit when he's like, well, I yeah, I don't even, I don't even think about that. I'm just saying, ain't nothing for free. But I'm saying, exactly. <laughs> but the, but no, no, I get what you're saying. You're saying like everything comes with a cost. But I'm saying the talking point usually is, well, well Bernie, you want to give everybody health care? How are you going to pay for it? And then they're like, and Bernie's like, well, you pay for it by, you know, taxing the wealthy and they pay their fair share like they don't now because they moved to tax havens and, you know, ship tax shelters and they move their money out of. Out of the country, you just, you just you and know. hold on, and, and that's another thing. People tired of that tax the wealthy shit, like like all oh, wealthy people are bad and deserve to have half their money taken. If they worked hard for the shit, why do they have to give it to your black ass? They don't have to. What, they what, he, he, hard for that shit. Let me let me say this. Bet, you know what it is. I'm I think that's another thing. Progressive just, just progressive just want people to give them shit all the like I don't know if I'm gonna give you no rights, especially gay rights when I don't agree with them. It is what it is, and everybody should have rights. But the, if that person feels strongly about like, no, nah, I don't agree with it. So, mate, so mate, I, mate, how do you not agree with gay rights? What is, what does that even mean? Them, I'm talking about those people who make the decision. They don't agree. They don't think that gay people deserve the rights. And it, hey, it is what it is. It's like hey, you got to deal with the reality of the situation. But but they not but going back to the point about the money, it's like or, or whatever we was. What were we just talking about? You talking about not taking money from rich people? Yeah, it's like they don't like uh, like I'm just gonna tax the rich and then give health care to everybody else. Like why? What did I do deserve to get have my money taken? Like I worked hard just like you did. So 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 people this... are tired of progressives equaling to. Give me something like I have to take for somebody else to get. Like no, you pull yourself up like I did. Like everybody ain't born into a rich family and they just a billionaire off rip. A lot of the one percent worked hard for that money. It's like I'm not. So so, so this, not, so, this, so this, is what, this is what Bernie said to that when when Black, Mike Bloomberg said why you gotta why you gotta text me? I worked hard for my money. And then Bernie said, look Bloomberg, I'm not saying you didn't work hard. But I'm saying that the fucking thousands of employees you have also probably have a lot to do with that. And tomorrow they decided they didn't want to work for you no more, and and they decided to make sure that nobody else worked for you no more. Those billions go away. So and, and wait, and you know what? But, and nobody will feel bad for him. So nobody should feel bad for the workers. So if, no, but, but, but listen, what I'm saying, Ber like, look, Bernie is a, is extreme. I don't believe what Bernie believes to the tenth degree. Bernie don't believe billionaires should exist at all. I'm not to that point. You know, Cap. The country is the country, but Bernie has proposed in the past, not recently, but in the past, he is he has literally supported, he has literally uh, 
uh, not sponsored, but but advocated for uh, worker ownership in companies. Like if you work for a company for a long enough time, you should have stock in that company. It is not right to consistently be a member of the, the administration, but not have any holdings in the fabric of it. I mean, he he's a guy who firmly believes that workers' rights are corporation rights. You know, like Mike Bloomberg may own a business that funnels down and he pays people, but those people have, because of their contributions to the wealth he's accumulating, they have as much right in the ownership, right? And that's a, that's a pretty, you know, far left idea to a lot of people, especially here in America, where it's like, like you say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. The point people make, the point he makes is the money made is not simply you. At a certain point, those billions that you're bringing in, you may say, I worked hard for this, but for you to say you're working harder in that moment, okay, let's say fairness, right? But you're acting like the, the, those workers aren't getting paid. They are. Okay, Nate, I, I know, but they're always, to, I mean, the, the point of capitalism, the point of a corporation is you have to pay people less than what they're worth. You know, you never pay people as much as they're worth to the company. So, exactly. So you can make a profit. I, I, th I think Bernie's point, because he is, he's so deeply instilled with like that communist socialist uh, ideology. His, his thing is this, uh, that the work has to be evenly, not evenly distributed, but the work has to be evenly valued based on what you're doing now, not necessarily what you did in the past. Bloomberg's wealth now is a result of his work in the past, now allowing him to not work as hard to just accumulate wealth, which he thinks is a bad thing. What he's saying is the work you're doing now, like you, maybe 50 years ago, you were working in the trenches, building that wealth up. But now you don't do that kind of work anymore, and you're still and you're making more than you did then. He's saying that's a bad thing. The guy who worked in the trenches then is now you working in the trenches now. But now that guy now can't make the kind of wealth you made then because of your the money you make literally umbrellas it to a degree that it boxes out other abilities to have another Bloomberg in the future. The it's like of, tell him to go start his own company and build it up, and then that, he could. Okay, but that's what people say. The point of capitalism is people have to lose, and you have to have workers, and you have to have bosses. I mean, part of why entitlement programs exist, like welfare, like unemployment, like Social Security, like Medicare, Medicaid, is because America had to have those uh, those socialist principles instilled in them legisl through legislator legislate legislature because. The Great Depression happens, which was a result of capitalism failing. You know what I'm saying? So, cap like, un like what you're talking about, people working hard and making that money, that's the ideal version of capitalism. Deregulate everything, make your money, and you can become rich like me. But if that's the case, you have to also consider history, which is, yes, you can you can make your own McDonald's, but because McDonald's already exists, it's extremely difficult to make a niche and then franchise that out in the way McDonald's did. When McDonald's existed, there was not another McDonald's to compete with or a or a you know similarly <laughs> franchise to hold them back in the same way. The time has changed. Don't do McDonald's. Do an online app or do a site or do a website. It, it's the techn it's the technology age. There are more people making money off the internet and fastly than any time in American history. It's easy now to become rich more than any time in American history or any time in human history. You just gotta go there, do no it. More, there are more outlets to make money. That's for sure. Uh, Absolutely, and it's like yeah. if if but but if you're a worker, that's fine. We need workers. You need people who are going to be an employee. But at the same time, you have to understand that you're an employee, and you are not to get the same benefits or pay as the owner. But that, but, that, but that's a that's a capitalist framework with which you were raised in. And and Bernie, Bernie. No, no, no. It ain't got nothing to do with capital. It's what I. It's what I. But I don't. I don't know about capital. But Nate, but but Nate, you you were born within a capitalist structure and society. That's your education for how things would go. If you were born in fucking mother in the Soviet Union in the '60s, your idea would be there's no such thing as wealth. We work for the republic. There's no such thing as accumulating land and assets and you know a certain amount of wealth. We don't accumulate wealth. Whatever we get, we funnel back into the republic for the greater good. So that everyone I mean, has wealth. Well, hold on. You do that anyway. It's called taxes. It's just not as much. No, no. Taxes is mainly for infrastructure ways, for like your representative government, for roads, things like that. But the point of America, or at least the 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 conservative Republican uh, talk, Republican ide ideological POV of like why capitalism should be deregulated is that we'll take what we need for the stuff so you can get the roads, you can get the lights, you can get the sidewalks, but and you know the occasional convention center here and there. But 
you'll, hey, you'll, you'll keep your money and you'll, and you'll make your wealth and you'll diversify and you'll figure out the best way to use your money because the, the the point of the 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 kind of Republican talking point, what they typically use, why they cut taxes and things like that, is they say, "You, the you, the person, you, Nate, the human being, is knows what's best for you and your money. So we're gonna give you more of it back. We'll just take the bit we need for the stuff that like has to work day to day. But you keep most of it, and what you do with your money is your business. You know, if you want to buy healthcare, you should buy healthcare. If you don't, you don't need it." Obviously, mm-hmm. you, you make that decision for yourself. Whereas Bernie says, or uh, uh, the far left ideological thing is, capitalism works to a degree, but you need socialist principles so that when people fail, like you inevitably will, because capitalism needs winners and losers. That's the principle of the uh, philosophy. When you become a loser, one, the loss doesn't become de- uh, debilitating to a point where you literally lose everything and you can't even get medicine or have a place to stay and but and and but the inverse of that would be like you would say and i think you were kind of on that conservative slide i'm not saying you are i'm saying that's a conservative type thing think is if you if your loss is so big that you lose all that money then you deserve to lose that money you know what i'm saying to be to be a person to be a responsible human being in this society today is if you get all your money back and you decide to invest all your money in fucking organic eggs and they tank and they go under that's on you because you made a dumb choice we should the government shouldn't be up here to buoy you for making a stupid decision whereas the inverse is the government is here to to support you so if you make a dumb decision you can maybe bounce back from hopefully a good one in the future you know that that's revisionist history to think that it's ever been here to support you that's why i don't it's it's never been that job oh no no regulate the country i agree with you like you're you're speaking from a very smart perspective where you're saying is the history of America and specifically government in America has been for self-serving thing to only uh, pay attention to the rich and the corporatized. So that this this so why would it be different now? Is exactly. Whole... This this idea what Bernie is proposing is only far fetched. So even if Bernie were to win, it's not like it would happen because the system is set up in a way so that it doesn't do that. I'm not even I'm not talking about none of this. I'm not specifically talking about Bernie, but you're saying like the structure is already there. Like I'm not like, about the, structure. But I'm saying, like, you, if you were Nate speaking to some people, you're basically saying, history has told us that this is not the case. So why are we expecting it in the first place? You should just disengage and do what you can for yourself in your own. Right? Yeah. Which is which is a smart plan, which is what, which is like a very independent, centrist plan. You know what I'm saying? You're not saying the government is best when it's not interfering. You're saying government will interfere and the best thing to do is to just not engage with it at all and do what you can for yourself. And I, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to speak for you, so tell me if I'm wrong. I, I think you, as a person, are all for gathering a certain amount of wealth, pooling it with people you trust and understand and agree with, and using that to buoy the wealth of this community that you have crafted and you kind of have uh, like-minded people within and within that small structure you then delegate what funds get used for where and you can decide what's the best case for your people and your your uh, environment and not let the kind of powers that be like the government or corporate media or whatever influence that like it's all about this kind of closed system of like success and wealth built within this community you create Am I right? I, I, I dictate my own life, absolutely, and I want people in it who I trust. And I think I, I think I sent you a Robin Hood um, text a few days ago. Did I? I don't think so. Okay, well, I, I meant to, but the Robin Hood app, you mean? Yeah, I got the app, and I gave Jazz. I, I, I sent her the message, and she started it. And I need to get an account, um, so then I can start trading and whatnot. But she she's already been trading because I um like recommended the app to her. She already got a free app. She's already put in some in the AMC because it's down right now. I ain't going to give all our secrets. But, um, yeah, I've, I've already started. And I, I'm very much in a, about the community. And I, I saw these two people yesterday. I was reading up on this on this family in Milwaukee. It was a woman and a man, two so-called black women and men. And they were building up a community and this, it was this gangbanger turned like community leader. And they were just, and um, she allowed him to be the head. And they worked in tandem and they were like planting trees and growing the infrastructure and like prices of houses were going up. I've seen what we can do by ourselves. 
you don't need that other stuff. That's my that's my whole contingent. Like it's it's, it's my my whole point is this: we have all the tools and, and and the requisite like parts needed and the intellects. We think we just need people so bad. We have such a low self esteem of ourselves, and I'm like, man, we literally have everything we need. You just have to pull together. You just have to get people who believe in it as much as you do and bring together your resources. And it may not be a lot, but it can be. Nothing starts off grand and it takes time. But I've seen a community grow like in that story. In Milwaukee. I can't think of who the family is, but I can tell you later. But it's this family. It's, just, it's these two people in Milwaukee and they just grew the community themselves. And, and they saw a change like over time. Mm -hmm. It was bad. And they took... Uh, and and they took liberty in saying we're gonna do this ourselves. We're not gonna ask people for help. We're not gonna ask people to get rid of the gangs and all that stuff. We're gonna show people a different way that you don't have to be a certain way to make it a certain way. And they changed people's mindsets and their hearts and they built that community from the ground up and it started to become a wealthy community of so called black people. That's my contention. I don't need nobody else. I don't need a president who's really just a talking head for other people who own the banks. I don't need Congress. I don't need Senate. I don't need I don't need a mayor. I don't need a governor. I don't need none of that shit. I need my people in me. And I need people who are disciplined enough to say, you know what? We can take some accountability for our own life. And we don't need other people to tell us how to live and be like, oh, help me, sir. I can go get it myself. And that's and you know what the best thing is? When I want to be able to look back at life one day and be like, damn, I did all this by myself. Or or not, or not even by myself. I had a group of people who I believed in, and they believed in me. And we did this together. You know who didn't help? A man in a suit. Or, or a woman in a suit. Or, or a judge. Or a president. It was us. We did this ourselves. That's the most empowering... Uh, like, all these women talk about empowerment. The most empowering thing to me is to not ask for stuff. Like, like I watched the morning show early, like, yeah, uh, earlier. You know, I hate that show because it's like you're trying to change a system like, or you're trying to change an infrastructure instead of being like, you know, I'm just going to make my own. I'm going to make my own news place. I'm going to start it off small. I'm going to build it up. and It will be the infrastructure we want. And then over time, people will see how we act and how we do it. And then I'll be like, damn, why ain't everybody else doing it like this? It's so much better over there. And then I say, why don't you change instead of like trying to like topple this infrastructure? where you might have to lose your job because of it and start at ground zero. You could have just got people who think like you, who feel the way you do, and started your own thing. It's, it's like, but you want to take it from somebody else because I guess that makes you feel better about the situation? Or or, or you just don't want to do the work? I'm more about doing the work than, than being like, you know what, Bernie? Give me that free health care. Like, nah. Like, is it important? Sure. Is it good for everybody to have? Yeah. But when is America ever given things that were important and that everybody should have to the people. No, you have to go take some stuff yourself. You have to get in a position of power where you say, you know what, I can actually afford that health care now. And everybody ain't going to get it. You, uh, part of this life is understanding that everybody will not get what they're deserved. In fact, a lot of people won't. And some people might get what they don't, what they aren't deserved. Or, or, or people get stuff that they don't deserve. And sometimes good people will have bad things happen to them. It's part of the process. You can't get jaded and you can't get like hurt and you can't get a, a, like uh, burnt out. You got to keep going because at the end of the day, it's like, hey, anybody going to feel bad for you? And um, I, I, it was this Chris Rock. It was a Chris Rock quote he has. He was like, whatever my car would break down going down the highway, I would get out and push it. Uh, not because it's going to make it go faster, but if people see me sitting in the car, then they're less willing to get out. They see me pushing it, then they want to help because they see that I've already started to help myself. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm going to help myself first. And people will come eventually. They'll be like, hey, I see the work you're doing. I kind of want to get in on that. This is going to make the job easier. But if they leave, I'm not missing nothing. Because I didn't start with them in the first place.